It is time for our weekly chat with our good buddy, WSN Injury Insider, Dr. Jeff Pierce, the Michigan Sports in Spine Center in Livonia. Dr. Pierce, how you doing, young man? Great. How are you guys? Feeling like a million bucks. The two of you look like you've been on vacation. We have look been. Relaxed. Look at that. Got a chance to go to North Carolina, as I told you last week. It was wonderful. But you also got a chance to go somewhere. Where would you go, Doc? I, I did a little whirlwind tour. Okay. Tell me about it. Really? All right. So... Opening day on Friday. Okay. Wake up Saturday morning, fly to Louisiana, New Orleans for the first Kid Rock Jason L. Dean Festival. Get out of here. Which I was a part of the I'm the I'm the clin- the mel- medical consultant for the festival. Look okay. at you. And spent the day in New Orleans. So you just get to chill. To, huh? You just get to chill. <laughs> Went to the concert in Gonzales, Louisiana, which I thought was literally in the middle of nowhere. It's 20 minutes from Baton Rouge, 40 minutes from New Orleans. Wow. Okay. Dude, it was amazing. It was the first time out. They had 25,000 people. I saw some clips from that. Yeah. But it was nice. I mean, I, I did this on, on McCarty's show, too. I don't want to get all political and all that, but it was nice to see Go America again. Right. You know, the Patriots, the veterans being respected. Stand up, good old, you know, not not crapping on America. Like, it was good old boys, good messaging, God bless America. Say the, you know, it was, all, it was nice. It was, it was. It's almost sad that you have to say, I don't want to get political, but it was nice to see, go America. Right. <laughs> it is. I mean, from medical, I mean think, from, about, think yeah. about that for a second. You know, I have to preface this with the... Go America! It's okay, USA, <laughs> USA, right? Well, it, it is. I mean, right. that's what it was. And, right? You know, Kid Rock, love him or hate him, North he's Carolina. he's saying it. And he, we got to sit. Yeah, you know, obviously, we hung out after, and he felt so good about it that he's making a difference. Of, you know, I'm bringing it to the people that deserve it. You know, mm-hmm. and the veterans. To ever, whatever. We'll have a whole topic yeah. on veterans because of our paralyzed veterans and everything else that I'm personally involved with. <clears throat> and then um, wake up. Actually, I didn't go to sleep. Six a.m. flight. Miami did the live tournament. Talk, so, this live tournament. How was that? Because it, they play fifty-four hole tournaments. Yeah. Right. So they play Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's yeah. it. And they wear whatever they want. Yeah. But they shorts. gotta have their sh- their their team shirts on, team hat. It was cool. It's a cool concept. I get it. It's a party. Um, you know, Trump was there all day on Sunday in his membership area where, you know, you got to pay to play. There's a Studio 54 tent. You know, the old, uh, you're too young. Maybe. I know about Studio oh, 54. I know about Studio right. 54. Right, so Studio 54. The two, then the... two guys from uh, Syracuse. That's what? Two, two kids from Syracuse started it. Oh, in New York? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where are they now? Dead. Uh, one started, yeah, one's dead, and the yeah. other one's, yeah, true. One's yeah. dead, and the other one started the, the W Hotel, like the, the designing for the boutique hotels. So he made out like a bandit. I didn't know that. Full of random part. knowledge. You, you do have good knowledge. <laughs> so we did that. We'll do it short. And then we did uh, the Live Nation t- uh, t- Tortuga in Fort Lauderdale, which was a beautiful night. Jason Aldean was there. It was just a great, great night. You know, shout out to Live Nation. They always do a great job, and it's just professional, cool, and that's so should... cool, man. That yeah. is so cool. I love that. So um, that was my weekend. That yeah, that sounds pretty good. Uh, we'll get into some injury news here. <laughs> uh, over the last couple of days, a big scare in Milwaukee in the NBA. Uh, Giannis Tedekumbo, uh just kind of jogging uh, down the floor, Whoa. stops, and it looked like he. Everybody immediately thought he tore his ACL. He did not. No, his Achilles. His Achilles. Um, I, but, yeah, take it from here, Doc. He did not, though, yeah. thankfully. You know, this this did concern me, but it was actually a great teaching moment. So if you really know what was going on with Giannis, Giannis stated the day before that morning that he's going to play through a hamstring injury mm-hmm. because I want to make sure we stay at the number two position. I'm going to be there supporting the team. I don't want to fall down to three. So it, ta- it, it points to a lot of things that I bring out when the body's out of whack. You know, just use out of whack as the medical term right now. But if his hamstring's hurting, his buttocks is hurting, his glutes, they're tightening up, that means he's got to change his mechanics. So when he changes mechanics, he's putting more pressure from the knee down. 
So he didn't tear it, but he strained it, right? Mm -hmm. So he looks strained like a clap. calf. Yep. Yeah. So they said, call it a tenosynovitis or te tendinosis. So I was watching ESPN that morning, <clears throat> which I think was yesterday morning, and they go, if you, there's no doctor in the house, you have to ask a football player what all this means. <laughs> so that was, a, that was the gimmick. I'm like, I'm right here. Just call. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> the point is, is that when his mechanics were off, it put more pressure on his calf or from the knee down. So it was the same side. The hamstring was a pull. Fortunately, it's not a tear. But again, he's putting more stress on different parts of his body to compensate for the bad hamstring. So the good news is, I didn't know what you want to talk about, but the good I wanted to point out when your mechanics are off, as you know, listeners or whoever's out there, you know, you gotta take care of it. You know, I always use the example of a car will go down the road with four wheels on it. If one thing's out of a line, you're still gonna get from point A to point B, but you're wearing differently and you're gonna compensate somewhere. So that's you know what's going on here. He's compensating somewhere and he paid for it. He didn't get through it. So it might be a, a blessing that he kind of injured now. He'll rehab properly and be stronger for the for the tournament. Yeah, there's four, four games left of the regular season. He'll sit those four games and rehab. Braylon? Great example is just KD when he was with the Warriors, when he tore his Achilles, when he was playing, when he tried to come back, he forced the issue of coming back. He was hurt already, knew he right. shouldn't play. But you, when your body is hurting, for lack of a better word, man, like you, your body, like you said, overcompensates. It rotates. You no longer run so hard this way. You try to run light on this side and gingerly, if you will. Eventually, it catches up to you. Now, that's the, the best thing is to sit out, but this is another one of those situations where you get people complaining about low management or you get people that are pissed if you're not in this game. That's when the argument from players comes in about low management. You knew you could not have – I'm not going to say should not have played the game, but you knew you probably could have took a game off right there. Then it would have been a lot better moving into the next round. But he played, now he's overcompensating, now he's hurt. Yeah, I love having hindsight, but there's a lot of guys who play – they get through it, and we don't hear about it. Right. This one we hear about. KD, we hear about it. Yeah. The overall message, and I've said it, depends where you are in the season, right? Early season, he's sitting out. Late season, we're going to get ready for playoffs. You know, would he second-guess himself right now? Absolutely. Sure. But, you know, can we predict the future? No. If I did, I'd be doing, you know, real well. Yeah, we'll be here. <laughs> No doubt. Not none, just of, none of us What's will that? be sitting here. What's it? So, so he's got a strained calf. What's that recovery like? He, you know, w do, do you get 100% uh, like over the next couple of weeks to play in the playoffs? He's going to be probably in that 90%. He's going he's gonna to feel it. He'll have, like I say, the secret sauce. He'll probably get it taped up. Um, some type of support. He, you know, wear the compression garment. Just to create. But what is it? It's, a, it's an irritation. It's an inflammation within the tendon. So you have the muscle. You have the, the big gastroc muscle, which is the back of your leg. And then that thins down to the Achilles to your, the back of your foot. <clears throat> so the Achilles, I don't know exactly. I think it's just above where the tendon starts thickening. So you have a little tendinosis. So that inflammation between all the creams and the sauces and the potential laser treatment and stuff like that, they should be able to get him healthy mm -hmm. from an inflammation standpoint. Then it's a matter of him strengthening appropriately. So his first step may be a step slow. 100% it will be. Um, let me ask you about another big topic this week, Doc, um, and that is all the arm injuries in baseball. Shane Bieber, the ace of the Cleveland Guardians, um, out of the blue, needs Tommy John surgery. Um, Justin Verlander was asked uh, because this is a number of pitchers now early in the season. Uh, Casey Mize, Tigers pitcher, just came back from after being yeah. uh, out for two years because of an arm injury. Tarek Skubal came back last year Imagine. after an arm injury. So many arm injuries to pitchers, specifically <laughs> young pitchers, in today's game. Here's a stat. Um, What's that? There were more Tommy Johns in the last two seasons than there were in the whole decade of the 90s. Really? 100%. That is incredible. What do you make that to? What do you attribute that to? You know, we, we talked about this also. It's, I don't, I'm not sure. I mean, I know, Justin, what you said we talked about earlier. You know, is it sports specific? Is it because they're not cross-training? Is it because they're not taking proper care of their body, proper dynamic warm-ups and stuff like that? All that plays a role. But also the competition is harder. You know, they're throwing maybe harder as a younger 
player, through high school, through college, through, you know, triple A, whatever they're doing, they're out to prove it because it is getting competitive. It's turning more into a business. And are we rehabbing them properly to keep them healthy? We're assuming they're young. They can do rotations, all that. That's not necessarily true, right? So if you're doing stuff, there's an overuse. It's more of an overuse issue, not a trauma issue. It's not like they're having collision. They're, it's all that use in the mechanics. And when the mechanics are off slightly and you're just throwing as hard as you can because you want to hit that, that 90 to 100, because mm -hmm. if you can throw over 100, you know, you're, you, you got a contract, right? Mm -hmm. So with control, <clears throat> so what they're doing is they're putting more stress on young, you know, I don't know where their puberty hit, yeah. but you're starting to create weaknesses in that area. So if those ligaments aren't developing appropriately, like with a cross training, where if you're just throwing and throwing, you know, eventually you only get so many turns. So there's a couple ways to look at overuse. You only get so many turns on that shoulder, that elbow, that ligament rolling over the ulnar, you know, the ulnar bone, things like that. You know, that's part of it. Are they respecting their body? Are they recovering? Do they have proper, you know, we do pitch counts now. Are we watching the pitch count? Are we throwing different mechanics and different junk that they're doing? So there's a lot of factors. Is there one thing to point to? No. But I think, I think overall, this is going to slow down. Like I used the example with, with McCarty. This is when we started seeing a lot of sports hernias, mm -hmm. right? We're going to change the way they're addressing it because this is a big issue. When you pull out a stat, we've had more Tommy John surgeries in the last two years than we did in the last decade. Mm -hmm. That gets to the trainers. That gets to the, the agents, to, to everybody, anybody that's involved. You know, what can we do to change that? And then we change the training mechanism of sport. How many times do you hear a sports hernia now? Remember back in, I forget, early, you know, mid 2000s, we had more was sports, sports hernias hernia. than ever. Everything was mm -hmm. sports hernia. Yeah, or ACLs in women's basketball. We changed, yeah. we changed the training, we changed the method, we changed the pre, you know, the preseason warm up. So a lot of things are going to be addressed to this to, to you know, prevent it. They also brought up the thing about the pitch count, not just the pitch count, pitch the clock. timer, yeah. yeah, the clock, that that's putting more stress to, you know, they might be pushing it a little bit quicker on those mechanics, which probably is playing a role, but they should also be training their body to do that. So do we lower the pitch count because of the pitch uh, clock? clock? You know, the pitch time, like, I got it straight. <laughs> it's, it's, all, it's a mouthful, Doc. Yeah. So. You know, is that something that's going to be looked at? I'm sure it's going to be looked at. Then you're getting players union involved. So there's a, you know, there's the political, there's the, but at the end of the day, what's mechanically right for them, it has to be looked at. All those things I think are playing a role. And there may be better ways to evaluate, like uh, Otani. He actually did PRP. I don't know if you guys know this. He did PRP into his elbow for prevention of Tommy John. Mm. And he still had an issue. So there's regenerative stuff that's being looked at for being proactive, preventative, too. Talking about changing strategies, um, big week in golf. Masters is coming up. Uh, Masters played at Augusta, the hilliest terrain, if you will, on tour. Tiger Woods is going to play day one. What are the chances that he changed his strategy? He is playing better golf right now that he can able to finish. Last year he withdrew. The year before that he withdrew. And a lot of outings last year he withdrew. So... You know, I'm a Tiger guy, as is most everybody in here. What are the chances he's changed his strategy enough to be able to deal with the terrain? Because that's what gets his knees. Well, you know, I love Tiger. I always use him as a big example. I could do a couple of shows just on Tiger's injuries. Yep. But you already know he's changed his strategy. You know he's changed his approach. 100%. You know he's like, like a, there was a piece I, I saw yesterday about him on uh, Instagram where he's teaching Scotty and uh, Tommy right. Fleetwood. I saw that, about the hitting out of the rough, the yeah. five wood. Chop, chop, chop out it. with the five yep. wood. So you know he's not just swinging that iron like he used to. It's like, how do I get 170 out of my five iron now? I, I, you know, I've lost my pride. I, don't, I can hit 170 with a five iron, not my, uh, my wedge. Right, well, right. That's true. So there right there proves that he's, a, he's approaching the game differently. I think mechanically he's, he's looking at it. But also fatigue factor, right? You know, he was sick that one time. He, I think he was sick last year at the Masters also. So his body, he's, he's got a lot of things he's fighting besides his pride. Um, That's the biggest fight. 
Yeah, I mean, the guy's the most competitive athlete that I'm a, one of the most. Top top five. I know? mean, he was doing Navy SEALs training as a golfer. The right? all-time greats usually are, right? Yeah. Right, you're you doing know? something extra. Yeah. But to answer your question, I love to see him, but I don't want to see him – out of pride, hurt himself. I think he made the right decision last year yeah. to bow out. And, you know, the game wasn't there for him. But I think he's learned from that. I think he's dropped his pride level down a little bit to say, like, you know, another Kid Rock story with, uh, with Jack. Jack's like, you don't have to play from the tips. You play where you, you accelerate your game. Because Kid Rock's, you know, he's a young right. golfer playing with Jack, and, and he's like, are we playing from the tips? He goes, can you play from the tips? Like, you go, you play where you accelerate your game. That's so, so great. So that's – You get that's, the same score. <laughs> you get right, the same right? score regardless. That's right. <laughs> so cool. I actually moved up one, one level. Uh, oh, well, oh. well, you had so much fun last weekend. How, what are you doing this weekend, Doc? Come on. You I traveling anywhere? You. Okay. You can oh, tell no. us, but we're, then we're, you'd have to kill yeah, us. Yeah, I'll tell you We'll later. talk about it next yeah. week. We're, we, uh, I'm meeting a buddy in Vegas that's uh, – Okay. Just just some uh, couple of days gone. Nineteen doesn't beat twenty. Just remember okay. that. But listen, <laughs> Cranbrook Lacrosse. I got to do a shout out for my son. Sure. Yesterday, against the uh, UAD, four goals, two assists, eight eight score, eight to six, and uh, ah. he, he and he was shadowed. The coach said to the defense. I don't care where the ball is. Don't let that kid move. That number twenty-two. Don't let him move. And he still scored the winning goal from behind the net. It was unbelievable. I could pull the video off, but I think that's a little obnoxious. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Proud, proud dad. Congrats, Absolutely, as well. You should be, uh, Doctor Pierce. Thanks so much. We're going to talk to you next Thursday. Michigan Sports and Spine Center. Uh, Michigan Sports and Spine dot com. Bray, get us out of here, buddy. Tiger Woods, we just talked about him. He teased off at 3.54. The current time is 3.54, so that is the show. For my man, Silent Mike, Dr. Pierce, Pete Spivak, Tom Mazaway, who's hiding over there, my brother from another mother, Ryan Armani. We are Armani Edwards from Mad. We appreciate you tuning in. Keep tuning in and we'll USA, keep you in the USA, USA, <laughs> USA. It's not Love political. It. It's not political. <laughs> See you guys later.